Hi, I am Angelina Hadziu, uh, Flask board member and an embedded system software engineer. This talk is meant to be general, not too technical, in order to present the Debian operating system and why we like it, use it, share it and improve it. For those who do not know, Flask has been given the honor to be the host organizer of DebConf, the Debian Projects Developer Conference in 2022. So what's Debian? Debian is a worldwide project made of volunteer people who endeavor to produce a free operating system distribution. An operating system is a set of basic tools and utilities that make your computer run. At the core of an operating system there is the kernel, which is the most fundamental program on the computer and does all the basic housekeeping and lets you run other programs. This, in our case, is the Linux, the Linux kernel. So there are other kernels uh, supported by Debian, like FreeBSD, kernel NetBSD, and there is work in progress in integrating the Linux herd multi-server microkernel. So Linux is just a kernel of an operating system, and what you have in addition to that is a whole stack of applications that starts from the GNU project, which enables you to build those, and up to the end-user apps. <clears throat> so Debian is a distribution which ships kernel and a whole range of software applications. Of course, the thing that people want is the application software. Programs to help them do stuff, from editing documents, to running a business, to playing games, and to writing more software. Debian comes with over 59,000 packages, pre-compiled software that is bundled up in a nice way for uh, easy installation on your machine. It comes with a package manager, which is apt, and other utilities that make it possible to manage thousands of packages and thousands of computers as easily as installing a single application. And this is all free. So what does free mean? Uh, many people new to the free software find themselves confused because the word free in the term free software is not used the way they expect. To them free means at no cost. An English dictionary lists almost 20 different uh, meanings for the word free and only one of them is at no cost. The rest refer to liberty and lack of constraint. So when we speak of free software we mean freedom and not price. While, software is, while free software is not totally free of constraint, only putting something in the public domain does that, free software gives the user the flexibility to do what they need in order to get the work done. And at the same time, it protects the rights of the author. And now that is freedom. Uh, the Debian project is a quite strong supporter of uh, free open source free and open source software since many different licenses are used uh, on software a set of guidelines which is the Debian free software guidelines were developed to come with a reasonable definition of what constitutes as free software only software that complies with this guideline <coughs> is allowed in the main distribution of Debian. But Debian acknowledges that uh, its users may require the use of other works that do not confirm this guideline. For this reason, they have created the country and the non-free uh, areas in the archive. So the package in these areas are not part of the Debian system, although they have been configured for use in Debian. So Debian still supports their use and provides infrastructure. So Debian has a kind of a social contract with the free software community, which ensures a couple of things. And the first one is that Debian will always remain as free software and everything is developed open without hiding anything to the user, so totally open source. Um, Debian will run on almost anything and sure if you're a developer you can get Linux to run on any system under the sun. Um, each new release of Debian generally supports a large number of arch architectures and the actual stable release which is Debian Buster 10.5 supports uh, these 10 architectures. 64-bit uh, PC, 64-bit ARM, EABI ARM, hard float ABI ARM, 32-bit PC, MIPS Big Endian, MIPS Little Endian, 64-bit uh, MIPS Little Endian, uh, Power Processor and IBM System, system Z. 
And there are other ports which have non-official installation images which uh, like RISC V, Sunspark, Intel Litanium, SuperH, etc. I want to talk a bit about releases in Debian. Uh, Debian has at least three, rele three releases in the active maintenance. Those are stable, testing and unstable. The stable distribution contains the latest officially released distribution of Debian. This is the production release of Debian, the one which uh, is primarily record, uh, recommended to be used. Uh, the testing distribution contains packages which haven't been accepted into the stable release yet, but they are in the queue for it. The main advantage of using this distribution is that it has more recent versions of software. So the testing distribution becomes the stable one. The unstable distribution is where the active development of Debian occurs. Generally this distribution is run by developers and those who like to live on the edge. It's recommended that users running unstable should subscribe to the Debian develop announce mailing list to receive notification on major changes they may that may happen like for example upgrades that may break. Uh, the unstable distribution is always called Sid, like the kid in Toy Story who destroys his own toys. Debian announces uh, its new stable release in a regular basis. Users can expect three years of full support for each release and two years of extra long-term support. Debian stable version is well respected as a robust and reliable OS for the server. When it comes to using Debian on the desktop, however, uh, the, consensus, the consensus seems switch to switching source to the Debian testing. Uh, one major reason for that is that Stable's package offering gets all this time passes after its initial release. And stability-wise, Debian testing can be just as good as any other Linux distribution, at least theoretically. While it can still be a solid and reliable experience, Debian testing is not necessarily for everyone. Uh, Things that things are not exactly expected to break, but when they do, the unexperienced user might find themselves all alone. And couple that with the pre-release freezes when problematic packages might be left uh, in a limbo or even pulled. And you see that testing can require quite some work to be maintained. So if you absolutely have to have more up-to-date packages, you use it. Otherwise, uh, Debian stable is always here. Uh, stability is often undervalued, uh, especially when it comes to desktop computers. Server admins and corporate IT policemakers usually appreciate stability that comes with the cost of recentness. And the peace of mind that it brings, it can benefit the home user just as much. Imagine if you will an operating system that you install once, then just let it be yet it would continue to work at near optimal levels for years to come, especially if you don't forget to apply the oc occasional security patches. Um, when you come from another Linux distro, for example Ubuntu, this might be re the reminiscent to long-term support releases, but if you come from, for example, Windows, then this might be quite an impossible uh, concept to wrap, to wrap your uh, head around. Um, no forced update like in Windows 10, no nagging system upgrade every day like in Ubuntu. You install the system and then let it work for you and not the other way around. And Debian Stable is just like that. Uh, also, if you want to use Debian Stable and want some software that you use da daily to be up to date, uh, especially when uh, said software is expected to keep up with technological trends such as a web browser, in such case you can always use backports. Backports are packages taken from the next Debian release, which is called testing, adjusted and recompiled for usage on Debian Stable. You can install a backported package by enabling backports and then you can just add dash t buster backports install the name of the package and it's just as easy as that. I'd like to talk a bit about the quality of implementation in Debian. People often say how they come to Debian because of the app get, but the differentiating factor from other distro is the Debian policy and the uh, stringent package format quality assurance process. 
like look at these things like app list changes, app list bugs, dpkg build depths, ph builder, ph builder UML, and none of which could be implemented so readily by lacking a policy. So policy is defined, it's clear, it's enforced through the tools that you use every day. When you, uh, when you issue app get install the name of a package, you are not just installing a software, you're enforcing a policy. And that policy's objective is to give you the best possible system. What policy defines is the bounds of Debian, not your own action on the system. It provides a considerable cover of the technical aspects of packaging. Policy states what parts of the system, the package management system can change and what it can't and how to uh, handle configuration files, etc. By limiting the scope of the distribution this way, it's possible for the system administrators to make modification outside the area without uh, the fear that Debian packages will affect these changes. In essence, Polity introduces a new class of bugs, which are the policy bugs. Policy bugs are really critical. A package which violates policy will not be included in the Debian release. Add to that the Debian QA team, which does not maintain our uploads, helps with bug cleanup, performs security updates, and ensures that there is always someone looking at the system and working to create an integrated operating system. There is a lot of tools in the QA subsystem to help developers take care of their packages. The evalu evaluation process that each package has to undergo in the unstable distribution before it makes it into testing as the quality to the finished product. Once a package has not shown any important problems for a certain time of period, then it goes into the testing distribution. As mentioned before, this distribution is the release candidate for the future distribution, uh, which is released only when all the release critical bugs are resolved. This careful testing uh, process is the reason why Debian has a longer release cycle than other distributions. However, in terms of stability, this is quite an advantage. Uh, the Debian bug tracking system is the key to the Debian's quality. Uh, it files details of bug reports by users and developers. Each bug is given a number, is kept on a file until it's marked as having been dealt with. Initially, a bug report is submitted by a user in an ordinary mailing a mail message uh, to submit at bugs.debian.org and Debian bug reports should be closed uh, when the problem is fixed. Problems in packages can only be considered as fixed once a package that includes the bug enters the Debian archive. The release manager is fairly ruthless about throwing out any non-essential package with release critical bugs if they do not get fixed or it may delay the release if, any, if there is any critical package with a bug. Uh, there also exists the security bug tracker regarding the security bugs, which represents data derived from the security team, issues tracked in the CVE database, issues tracked in the national vulnerability database, and security issues discovered in packages as reported in the bug tracking system. Uh, compared to commercial Linux distribution, Debian has a far higher ratio of developers and packages. Added to the lack of uh, business cycle driven deadlines, Debian tends to do things right rather than do things to get a new version out for Christmas. Talking of desktop environments, a uh, desktop environment provides a coherent suite of applications in terms of look, functionality and usability. And Debian supports all kinds of graphical environments ranging from full-featured desktop environments to lighter alternatives to even minimalist but powerful window manager. We may mention the GNOME project, which provides two things, the GNOME desktop environment, which is an intuitive and attractive desktop for the users, and the GNOME development platform, which is an extensive framework for building applications that integrate into the rest of the desktop. We mentioned the Plasma by KDE, which is a powerful uh, open source graphical desktop environment for Unix workstations. It combines the ease of use, contemporary functionality, and quite an outstanding graphical design. Uh, XFCE is a lightweight uh, desktop environment for various NIX systems. 
designed for productivity, it loads the uh, it loads and executes applications quickly while conserving system resources. LXD is designed to work well with computers on the low end of performance spectrum, such as older resource constrained machines, uh, new generation notebooks, or other small computers. And MATE is the continuation of GNOME 2. It provides an attractive desktop environment using traditional metaphors for Linux and other uh, Unix-like operating systems. Other desktop environments available in Debian include Cinnamon, LX, Qt, Budgie, Enlightenment, GNU Step Window Maker, Sugar Notion WM, and possibly many others. An important part of an operating system is the documentation. The technical manuals that describe the operation and use of programs. As part of its efforts to create a high quality free operating system, the Debian project truly tries to provide all of its users with proper documentation in an easily accessible form. They are separated into the users docs and developers docs. For users, we may mention Debian installation guide, Debian administrator's handbook, securing Debian manual, aptitude users manual, etc. And for Debian developers, we may mention Debian policy manual, Debian new maintainer's guide, introduction to Debian packaging, etc. Debian has a huge internationalization effort, translating not only documentation, but also the configuration and install scripts. It helps to have a massively geographically distributed community. Debian as a project is involved in the outreach programs like Outreach and Google Summer of Code as a mentoring organization. Uh, making it possible for people to contribute to open source projects. Debian Outreach looks like an amazing initiative to bring new people into the project and also people coming from minority groups, uh, so it, uh, it has diversity. This way people get the opportunity to learn how to contribute, for example doing bug reports, sending fixes, patches, learning to make packages uh, or maintain them, do translation and documentation and help other users on technical issues that are discussed in the mailing list, on our IRC or in any other forum. So to have a chance for people in Kosovo to see the development of the Debian project closely, we as Flusk took our chance into bringing the Debian conference here in Kosovo in 2022. In addition to a full schedule of technical, social and policy talks, DevConf provides an opportunity that for two weeks, developers, contributors and other interested people can meet in person and work together on Debian more closely. This conference is extremely beneficial for the developing key Debian software component, components and improving the Debian internationalization. This event happens every year in different countries of the world since the year 2000. Uh, in 2022, it will be the first time after seven years that this conference comes to Europe and we expect nearly 600 tech people, programmers, engineers from all over the world. Um, for the end, since we are here, just as a fun fact, I'd like to mention some of the most famous uh, derivative operating systems of Debian, which are uh, Ubuntu, Linux Mint, Knopix, Tails, Kali Linux, Raspbian, PureOS, Hey, Elena. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, we have, I think, five to six minutes for some questions. And um, I, uh, if anyone from the chat wants to to, to have uh, for me to do them, please write them down so that we can talk about it. So I, I had a, a quick question about the conference. Um, is there any 
uh, ways that somebody can get involved? Uh, you mean involved with the Debian project before the conference starts or during the conference? No, I mean helping with the conference uh, because I think that might be uh, the, the best way of getting involved with Debian uh, might be also helping with organizing the conference. So do you expect people uh, to help you and in what capacity? Yeah, so actually with, uh, with Flask we are doing some user groups on different stuff. One of them is going to be uh, stuff included the Debian project, some other stuff are going to be like open hardware. Uh, uh, so we expect people to join, like uh, for eight months we are going to be gathered uh, twice per month and talk Debian related stuff or do like bug question parties or do documentation or whatever we get our minds to. So people can join before the, like uh, almost two years before the conference starts. And uh, this way people will get involved and I guess they will want to uh, meet the Debian developers their, their selves or become a Debian developer. So uh, Flusk has also accepts volunteers and accepts members. So by being a member of Flusk or a volunteer, uh, you can always help on the projects that we have. So there are many opportunities and we of course call for volunteers and call for people to join our organization and join the Debian project itself every day. Sounds super exciting. And uh, how can somebody, where, where are the communication channels? Where can somebody get more information uh, on how to get involved uh, before, during, and I think most importantly after the conference? Uh, so you're asking about the conference, about the local team, about involving with us. We of course have uh, have our emails info at flash.org, where uh, users and uh, people who want to get involved with any project that Flask does. So Debian Conference is a project of Flask, and users and people can get involved there. They can contact us there, and now they know us. They can contact us privately, but the uh, we also have the forum, which is uh, where we discuss our stuff, so users can contact us there. And um, we sometimes blog about our projects, and we will definitely put. We definitely have our uh, data and our contact there. But uh, when we create these user groups, when we send those calls, we will definitely send the mails and the IRC channels or whatever forum we decide for communication. Awesome. And uh, do you, uh, except uh, during the conference, uh, what do you think, or after the conference, what do you think um, it will be the impact of the event? Uh, you mentioned before that this is the first time after seven years uh, that this, hap this happens in Europe. Do you think this is going to have an impact on the local community or regional community as well? Uh, there are not many people who use Debian in in Balkans in general or uh, like they use Debian derivatives that I mentioned but not Debian itself at least I haven't met uh, those many people so people at least will start using it after they see the conference uh, people will, will start getting more involved and learning more about uh, operating systems and about free software and I'm pretty sure they will kind of like the ideology and all those stuff. Uh, so uh, I myself got involved with Debian through the Google Summer of Code project. So all I needed was an open source project to get me here and to get me to talk now about Debian and my uh, my contributions that I do, creating those user groups and uh, spreading the word about Debian because Debian gets all its fame. It's not uh, commercial. It gets all its fame, but by the users and by the media. So um, people will have the opportunity to uh, to share this, to create communities, and to contribute more to the open source. Because I think the, the main goal is open source, and it's free software, and uh, the main goal of the Debian project itself. Awesome. Thank you very much for your presentation. Looking really forward to the event. And uh, I'd like to present... Uh, 
thank you again, and I'd like to to welcome in the uh, next five minutes our next uh, friend, Emmanuel Dolev, who is going to speak about open sources business strategy, struggle, and success. Thank you very much. Thank you.